Hello students, welcome to the lecture on law relating to food service and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain Food Safety and Standards Act 2006, discuss on Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, understand general provision as to articles of food, define Food Safety and Standards Food Import Regulation Act 2011, discuss on Food Security Act. An act to consolidate the laws relating to food and to establish the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India for laying down science-based standards for articles of food and to regulate their manufacture, storage, distribution, sale and import to ensure availability of safe and wholesome food for human consumption and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Food is any substance consumed to provide nutritional support for the body. It is usually of plant or animal origin and contains essential nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins or minerals. The substance is ingested by an organism and assimilated by the organism cells in an effort to produce energy, maintain life or stimulate growth. Almost all foods are of plant or animal origin. Cereal grain is a staple food that provides more food energy worldwide than any other type of crop. Maize, wheat and rice in all of their varieties account for 87% of all grain production worldwide. Let us now discuss Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. Adulterant means any material which is or could be employed for making the food unsafe or substandard or misbranded or containing extraneous matter. Advertisement means any audio or visual publicity, representation or pronouncement made by means of any light, sound, smoke, gas, print, electronic media, internet or website and includes through any notice, circular, label, wrapper, invoice or other documents. Chairperson means the chairperson of the food authority. Claim means any representation which states, suggests or implies that a food has particular qualities relating to its origin, nutritional properties, nature, processing and composition or otherwise. Commissioner of Food Safety means the Commissioner of Food Safety appointed under Section 30. Consumer means person and families purchasing and receiving food in order to meet their personal needs. Contaminated means any substance, whether or not added to food, but which is present in such food as a result of the production, including operations carried out in crop husbandry, animal husbandry, or veterinary medicine, manufacture, processing, packaging, transport or holding of such food, or as a result of environmental contamination, and does not include insect fragments, rodent hairs, and other extraneous matter. Designated officer means the officer appointed under section 36. Extraneous matter means any matter contained in an article of food which may be carried from the raw materials, packaging materials or process system used for its manufacture or which is added to it. But such matter does not render such article of food unsafe. Food means any substance, whether processed partially, processed or unprocessed, which is intended for human consumption and includes primary food to the extent defined in clause, chewing gum and any substance including water used into the food during its manufacture, preparation or treatment, but does not include any animal feed, live animals unless they are prepared or proposed for placing on the market for human consumption plants prior to harvesting drugs and medical products, cosmetics, narcotic or psychotropic substances. Food additive means any substance not normally consumed as a food by itself or used as a typical ingredient of the food, whether or not it has nutritive value, the intentional addition of which the food for a technological including organoplaptic purpose in the manufacture may be reasonably expected to result directly or indirectly in it or its byproducts becoming a component of or otherwise affecting the characteristic of such food but does not include contaminants or substances added to food for maintaining or improving nutritional qualities. Food analyst 
means an analyst appointed under Section 45. Food Authority means the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India established under Section 4. Food Business means any undertaking, whether for profit or not, and whether public or private, carrying out any of the activities related to any stage of manufacture, processing, packaging, storage, transportation, distribution of food, import and include food services, catering services, sale of food or food ingredients. Food business operator. In relation to food business means a person by whom the business is carried on or owned and is responsible for ensuring the compliance of this act, rules and regulation made thereunder. Food laboratory means any food laboratory or institute established by the central or a state government or any other agency and accredited by National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories or an equivalent accreditation agency and recognized by the Food Authority under Section 43. Food safety means assurance that food is acceptable for human consumption according to its intended use. Food safety audit means a systematic and functionally independent examination of food safety measures adopted by manufacturing units to determine whether such measures and related results meet with objectives of food safety and the claims made in that behalf. Food safety management system means the adoption good manufacturing practices, good hygienic practices, hazard analysis and critical control point and such other practices as may be specified by regulation for the food business. Food safety officer means an officer appointed under section 37. Hazard means a biological, chemical or physical agent in or condition of food with the potential to cause an adverse health effect. Import means bringing into India any article of food by land, sea or air. Improvement notice means a notice issued under section 32 of this act. Infant food and infant milk substitute shall have the meanings assigned to them in clauses F and G of subsections of section 2 of the infant milk substitute, feeding bottles and infant foods, regulation of production, supply and distribution act 1992 respectively. Ingredient means any substance including a food additive used in the manufacture or preparation of food and present in the final product possibly in a modified form. Label means any tag, brand, mark, pictorial or other descriptive matter written, printed, stenciled, marked, embossed, graphic, perforated, stamped or impressed on or attached to container cover, lid or crown of any food package and includes a product insert. Let us discuss about Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India is an autonomous statutory authority set up under the Food Safety and Standards Act 2006 for laying down science-based standards for articles of food and to regulate their manufacture, storage, distribution, sale and import to ensure availability of safe wholesome food for human consumption. The Act aims to establish a single reference point for all matters relating to food safety and standards by moving from multi-level, multi-departmental control to a single line of command. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India is the administrative ministry for the implementation of FSSA. The Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer of Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, FSSA, have already been appointed by Government of India. The next thing to look at are the requirements for bacterial multiplication. What do bacteria need in order to grow? Bacteria are a lot like us. They need similar things in order to grow. And they are food, moisture, warmth and time. And we'll look at each of those properties individually. Let's have a look at the different types of food. First of all, high risk food. This is the major source of nutrients for food poisoning bacteria. They're common food vehicles of food poisoning, usually protein, ready to eat, stored under refrigeration, and no further processing is required. So you can eat them as they are. Raw foods, they're a major source of food poisoning organisms. Other food types include low-risk foods and ready-to-eat raw foods. Low-risk foods include acid foods, 
foods with a high sugar, salt or fat content, dry products, includes preserved foods not requiring refrigeration, and foods which you can keep at ambient storage or room temperature. And these are classes foods which will not support the growth of pathogenic microorganisms. Ready to eat raw foods such as fruit and salad vegetables should be thoroughly washed before consumption to minimize the risk from low dose pathogens, which we'll look at later on under foodborne diseases. So high risk foods then will support the growth of pathogenic microorganisms. They will grow on high risk foods. High risk foods have certain properties. First of all, they're high in protein. That's the building block of life. We need protein on a daily basis. And it's the same thing for bacteria. They're high in moisture and no further cooking or processing is required. In other words, ready to eat food. You could eat it as it is without reheating in a microwave or an oven. Please make some notes on this slide because the temperatures here are very important. First of all, this is a, a gemometer, I feel like a, a thermometer showing what happens to bacteria at certain temperatures. If we start off at the bottom of the thermometer, we've got minus 18 degrees Celsius. This is the maximum temperature of freezers, whether they're commercial or domestic freezers. So it's minus 18 degrees Celsius or lower. And at this temperature, bacteria will remain dormant. You won't kill them by freezing them, but they won't multiply. The next major temperature is your chiller or fridge temperatures, 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. Again, with a couple of exceptions, bacteria will not multiply at these temperatures. They will remain dormant. The next set of temperatures is the temperature danger zone. That's the red area that you can see. That's between 5 and 63 degrees Celsius. This is where bacteria start to multiply and this is where they cause a problem. So all food must be kept out of the temperature danger zone. If it's hot food it must be served above 63 degrees Celsius. If it's cold food it must be served below 5 degrees Celsius. Now at 5 degrees Celsius bacteria are starting to wake up from their sleep and they will start to multiply slowly. As the temperature increases then they will start to rapidly multiply up to the optimum temperature which is 37 degrees Celsius. At 37 degrees Celsius, which by the way is body heat, bacteria rapidly multiply every 10 to 20 minutes. As the temperature increases any further between say 50, 52, 55, it gets too hot for the bacteria so they will start to die off. Most bacteria are killed by 60 to 63 degrees Celsius. But the next important temperature I want you to write down and remember is cooking temperature, which is 75 degrees Celsius. All food must be cooked to core temperature, 75 degrees Celsius, for it to be safe. At that temperature, all bacteria are killed. The only way you can check that food has been heated to 75 degrees Celsius is by using a temperature measuring device. There are two examples shown there. The one on the left is the one that's most commonly used. It has an attachment which you can insert into the food, into the core, into the thickest part of the food to make sure it has reached 75 degrees Celsius. Beware of the infrared probe, however, because that only registers surface temperature. These are also called thermocouple probes. That's the hard probe thermometer on the left. In other words, it can be calibrated and it is tip sensitive. Okay, so how do we use a temperature probe? First of all, it should be properly calibrated. In other words, the reading on the LCD should be the temperature inside the food product. And we can do this by self-calibration. First of all, you need to check both ends of the scale. In other words, get a glass of water with some ice and cold water and get some freshly boiled water. Insert the probe into the boiled water and it should register 100 degrees Celsius plus or minus one degree. Insert the probe into the water with the ice and it should register 0 degrees Celsius plus or minus one degree C. If it's out by more than one degree C then the probe is faulty. Also the probe should be cleaned and disinfected between use. Now you can do this with probe wipes 
or you can use boiled water for example. Let's discuss general provision as to articles of food. General provision as to articles of food are defined as no article of food shall contain any food additive or processing aid unless it is in accordance with the provisions of this act and regulation made the re under. No article of food shall contain any contaminant naturally occurring toxic substances or toxins or hormone or heavy metals in excess of such quantities as may be specified by regulation. No article of food shall contain insecticides or pesticides residues, veterinary drugs residues, antibiotic residues, solvent residues, pharmacological active substance and microbiological counts in excess of such tolerance limits as may be specified by regulations. Genetically modified foods, organic foods, functional foods, proprietary foods, packaging and labeling of foods, restrictions of advertisement and prohibition as to unfair trade practices. Provision relating to import. No person shall import into India any unsafe or misbranded or substandard food or food containing extraneous matter. Any article of food for the import of which a license is required under any act or rules or regulation except in accordance with the conditions of the license and any article of food in contravention of any other provision of this act or of any rule or regulation made thereunder or any other act. The food authority and the state food safety authorities shall be responsible for the enforcement of this act. The state government shall appoint the commissioner of food safety for the state for efficient implementation of food safety and standards and other requirements laid down under this act and the rules and regulation made thereunder. Licensing and registration of food business. Prohibition orders, powers of food safety officer. Let us now discuss the next topic, food safety and standard regulation 2011. Under the Food Safety and Standards Act, the FSSAI has a mandate of ensuring safety of food items imported into the country also. The authority has engaged the National Institute of Smart Government under the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology for the design and conceptualization of the IT and ABLE imported food safety system. As part of this engagement, NISG is assisting the authority in establishing the operationalization of food import clearance processes at various ports of entries. Officers of the Food Authority Authorized Officer There shall be an authorized officer for as many points of import as the Food Authority may deem necessary and notified in accordance with these regulations. Qualification of the authorized officer The authorized officer shall have the same qualification as a food safety officer defined in the FSS. Rules are such additional qualification prescribed by the Food Authority. Powers and duties of the authorized officer Licensing of food importers no person shall engage in the business of import of food without obtaining a license as food business operator under importer category from the Central Licensing Authority under FSS regulation after complying with the requirements set out therein and procedure given in regulations. Any person engaged in import of food other than through personal baggage or gifts or for medical use shall apply for license to the licensing authority in conformance with the procedure laid down in FSS regulation provided that. Provided further importer must be registered with DGFT and possess valid IE code. The applicant shall submit additional information in the prescribed format provided in form AI and furnish copies of documents provided in the annexure XX of these regulation to the licensing authority. Upon receipt of the completed application for license along with all documents and requisite fees, the licensing authority shall, if suitably satisfied, issue a license to the applicant as a food business operator, food importer, in the format prescribed by the food authority. The food importer shall ensure that all condition of licensees provided. Processing of application for license. The processing of application for license by the food importer shall be governed by FSS regulation by the Central Licensing Authority. Validity and Renewal of License 
unless notified otherwise the validity and renewal of license shall be governed by FSS regulation suspension or cancellation of license certificate the licensing authority may suspend or cancel food importer license granted under the regulations in all such cases the licensing authority shall issue improvement notice or suspension notice to the food importer stating the reason thereof the food importer shall reply to the notice within 30 days from the date of its receipt in the event that the licensing authority after considering the reply of the food importer is still of the opinion that the food importer has acted in contravention of any of the condition of such license or upon the lapse of the period stipulated in sub rule this license certificate where no reply has been received from the food importer within this period such authority may cancel the relevant license a suspension or cancellation of license under these regulations shall not entitle the food importer to any compensation or refund of fee paid in respect of the license certificate suspension or cancellation of any license granted by the directorate general of foreign trade for the purpose of import or revocation or suspension of the importer exporter court shall result in automatic and immediate suspension or cancellation of any license granted under these regulations any material change in the information should be conveyed by fbo to the food authority ensuring food security ought to be an issue of great importance for a country like india where more than one third of the population is estimated to be absolutely poor and one half of all children malnourished in one way or another there have been many emerging issues in the context of food security in india in the last two decades these are economic liberalization in the 1990s and its impact on agriculture and food security establishment of wto particularly the agreement on agriculture aoa under it challenges of climate change crisis of the three fs namely food prices fuel prices and financial crisis the phenomenon of hunger amidst plenty that is accumulation of stocks in the early years of this decade and in 2008 to 9 along with high levels of poverty introduction of targeting in the public distribution system pds for the first time in the 1990s right to food campaign for improving food security in the country and the supreme court orders or midday meal schemes proposal for national food security law right to food and monitor able targets under the 10th and 11th five year plan similar to the millennium development goals mdgs on poverty and women and child nutrition availability of food food security at the national level refers mainly to availability in the country of sufficient stocks of food to meet domestic demand either through domestic supply or through imports here we look at the performance and policies with regard to availability of food it's time to take a closer look at waste and how to deal with it what a load of rubbish thank you marilyn let's look at a worst case scenario Now, are you the chef? Yeah. I'm the environmental health officer. Pleased to meet you. Well, I'm not pleased to meet you. Oh. This kitchen is disgusting. Look at your bins. So? They're too full. You should empty them more often. Whoa, man. Whoa. Stop. You must always wash your hands after touching bins or any waste. It's all right. They're clean. No, they're not. They'll be covered in bacteria from the bin. Whatever. I'd like to see the backyard. This way. Why aren't these bags tied up and stored in the bin? It gives a little rat something to eat. When was the last time you cleaned out here? Huh? Clean the yard? It only get dirty again. And I suppose you never close the bins either. No, we keep them open and let the flies out. Waste needs to be in covered, clean bins. and every business must have a commercial waste collection contract with a licensed waste company performance attainment of self sufficiency in food grains at the national level is one of the country's major achievements in the post independence period after remaining a food deficit country for about two decades after independence india became largely self sufficient in food grain production at the macro level Oh! <laughs>
Years ago, small-scale producers were growing indigenous plants from community cared and kept seeds, until powerful companies, in an attempt to commodify farming and food production, sold them patented and GM seeds along with chemical fertilizers and pesticides. While the benefits from having greater yields were enjoyed for a time, the overuse of chemical fertilizers and other modern farming methods have damaged the land and environment. This, along with the rising price of oil, has meant that many can no longer afford or access the industrialized farming methods that now dominate global food production. Many large-scale farmers receive financial assistance through large subsidies, but small-scale farmers don't have the support or the resources to boost production. Weather unpredictability from climate change is affecting crops with drought, flooding and other severe and erratic weather changes. Small-scale producers are often lacking proper storage for their produce, so they cannot store their food for the winter or create stable income from a stored harvest in the off-season. They have challenges getting their produce to markets because of bad infrastructure, and expensive middlemen, along with cheap imported food, have created markets with prices that local producers cannot compete with. Women produce the majority of food, but their challenges are multiplied because they don't have the same rights to the land as men. Governments in developing countries are pushing people off their land and offering it to foreign governments and corporations for extremely cheap prices. They invest in offshore land to grow crops for food and fuel. Once it's grown and harvested, it's sent out of the country, leaving its people with uncertainty about where their land or food will come from. Currently, one third of corn crops grown in America are used for biofuels. Now that the demand for biofuel has taken over available cropland, companies look elsewhere to grow their corn. But filling an average sized car with biofuel amounts to as much maize as the average African person consumes in an entire year. And the less food there is for people, the more the food prices go up. Industrial farming to make biofuels also results in large amounts of CO2 being released into the atmosphere, accelerating climate change and reversing the positive effects that cleaner fuels have. Big investors are treating food as another traded commodity and while it means big profits for agribusiness firms, most people are suffering because of it. The UN is calling for an investigation into the possibility that global food prices are being artificially pushed up by financial speculators. The prices of staple food could more than double in the next 20 years, and the demand for fuels used in industry and transport is adding to the increase. We have enough food on our planet to feed everyone, but hunger and obesity are indicators that our food system is not working. Around one third of all food produced is not consumed, but wasted. This amounts to nearly 1.3 billion tonnes. In wealthy countries, food is wasted when corporations, retailers and consumers toss perfectly edible portions into the bin. In underdeveloped nations, food goes to waste due to bad infrastructure and inefficient distribution. A few powerful governments and companies dominate the global food system. Three agribusiness firms control nearly 90% of grain trading between them. They have utilised advances in science and technology to boost production, but they have failed to adopt sustainable practices to ensure the survival of our environmental systems. Food is responsible for up to 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Too many of the ways we grow food today are using up and destroying the natural resources we rely on. Arable land per person is decreasing, having almost halved since 1960, and water is even scarcer than land. Agriculture accounts for 70% of global fresh water use. The rising demand for oil to fuel our factories, power our cars, and meet our consumerist needs, as well as the increasing demand for meat and dairy products, is putting added pressure on the system. By 2050, there will be 9 billion people on the planet, and demand for food will have increased by 70%. As seasons and rainfall patterns become more erratic and unpredictable due to climate change, it will be even harder for farmers to know when to sow, cultivate and harvest their crops. On top of this, extreme weather events can wipe out harvest in a single stroke. The global food system must be transformed. It's actually already started, and in most cases, governments aren't leading it. It's changing from the roots with individuals, organisations and movements, connecting globally by a vision for a healthy system that supports everyone. A growing desire for change has been gaining momentum and its focus is a system with global solidarity, where we listen to the unheard voices and needs of all and act out of cooperation, not competition. 
where we share resources fairly and value the environment, and where everyone has enough to eat, always. The shared vision that is growing from the roots is pressuring governments and corporations to change their old ways, giving way to innovation and increasing solidarity. Consumers are putting pressure on companies to shift to ethical and sustainable practices. Governments are now being forced to intervene on rising food prices, and steps are being taken toward better policies and trade agreements. Whether you work on a local, regional, national or global level, you can be a part of the... Now in the end, let us summarise what we have learned in this lecture. Food is any substance consumed to provide nutritional support for the body. Food safety means assurance that food is acceptable for human consumption according to its intended use. The FSSA intends to engage multi-skill consultancy agency of national or international repute for preparation of a blueprint and assist in structuring and operational zinc FSSA. The processing of application for license by the food importer shall be governed by FSS regulation by the Central Licensing Authority. The food safety officer may enter and inspect any place where the article of food is manufactured or stored for sale.